Sweat, 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 sweat. Sweat Equity what? Podcast what? in streaming show, the number one comedy business podcast in the meow, 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 meow. on this girth earth. Well, number that's a one. New one that I don't know if I like or not. I'm the mirth of girth. Oh Christ! That's what I want my like <laughs> finder <laughs> intro to be. You know him as a mirth of girth, <laughs> Law Smith. Running in with a chair. For real, Z, we just won another award, right? Yeah. What is it? I don't know. It was. I uh, sent it to you. Okay. <sighs> Dude, you just gave me so much sass. <laughs> I did the whole episode, too. What was that? Sassy. That was a chick sass. Bro, I've been sassy all day. Your hands might as well have been on your hips. They were. I already said it to you. Um, you know, you can listen to this pragmatic entrepreneurial vice with a real raw dog doc uh, on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, anywhere podcasts are served in your eardrums. The what? This this episode is sponsored by Zupyak, Z-U-P-Y-A-K, the first search-optimized AI writer. I've been using it. I'm a member, man. Uh, that, look, I love it. I don't like all these very complicated AI content writing things. I just need to write a landing page. I just need to write a blog post. Bing, bang, boom, four steps. Here's all the keywords I need. Oh, get that SEO up. You like that? Yeah. Oh, you like that? Yeah. Go to uh, Zupyak, Z-U-P-Y-A-K dot com and put in the promo code SWEAT. SWEAT. Uh, Sweat. we, what the hell did we win here? We won Best SME Advice Podcast 2023 in the USA from North America that Business means something or other. SME means small, medium enterprise. Let's do this. Howdy toddy. It's called Sweat Equity. <laughs> Listening to the sweat. Yeah, we uh we just do the podcast kind of live on tape. We cr- we try to keep it efficient for all our guests. Um, good. Joe, why don't you um want it, instead of me trying to you know stumble through your bio, why don't you uh why don't you give a short bio and where to find you? Any links or plugs you want to promote? Yeah, sure. So my name is Joe Coey. I am. Uh, uh, San Francisco Bay Area resident since the 80s. And uh, I started a digital advertising agency called SalesX. We uh, we help people advertise on Google and uh, we're five times winners of the US search awards and everything else. Uh, besides that, I uh, started a company called XCBD. Uh, XCBD is uh, I started it because I, I do a lot of martial arts. I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu six days a week, and I do yoga every day. So I don't really need it because I started doing yoga every day. I don't really need as much CBD. But whenever I do get banged up, I could just rub some high-potency CBD in. And so I got this XCBD thing going so that we could sell single-dose packages that are extra strength. And so that's on xcbd.com. Um, besides that, my my background and my interests, uh, there's a lot of, uh, I started with my formal education is in engineering, but I've done sales and marketing and advertising for the past 13 years. And, uh, you know, motorcycling, martial arts, all the, all the two ends of the spectrum from heavy metal to opera, you know, just, Give it to me all. <laughs> now, normally, if I didn't know that background, I would give you a lot of shit for hitting a two o'clock crash where you are. Because um, you're very, but you're very calm, probably because of the things you're doing like that. Like the jujitsu, you know, the yoga. Uh, the most calm people I know are kind of into that stuff on a daily basis. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give it a pass instead of roasting, but... I'm the guy wearing a tank top. I don't know if you've, uh, we'd like to ask everybody that comes on the show first time, these two questions. Uh, number one, did you listen to the show before coming on? Yeah, I'm, oh. I'm busted there. Just because I came back from three weeks in India 
and uh i just got back and i'm like holy smokes i gotta be on so i haven't listened to any shows but that's my bad that's normally good, it's a good excuse i'll allow it uh most people are just like just straight up no i didn't know it was coming on some people were uh, i had to tell a lot of bookers booking agencies that hit us up i'm like if people don't come on and talk uh, passionately really about whatever you want them to come on to talk about I'm going to just lay into them like Howard Stern in the nineties or something like, cause yeah. we get people that come on and they, it, they feel, it feels like they're uh, forced to do it like hostage. And it's like, Hey, you guys asked us to come on most, most right. of them are, are asking us through an agency. And then uh, the second question I always uh, like to ask, we ask all our guests, um, what advice would you give your 13 year old self? Yeah. So the yeah. thing about, I have you you say, a silly, a silly boy show. This is uh, <laughs> actually, actually, I, I don't know uh, how you nailed that, but I have a 13 year old son. <laughs> and we ask everybody this question because 13 yeah. is such a pivotal age, you know, it, it really can be that to me, it is that, that uh there's a couple of different routes you're going to go with your life and i feel like not to go like string theory or time travel talk but like you know a lot of things that happen at 13 can really push you in the in a direction yeah because you got hormones and uh a lot of time and energy but not a lot of knowledge or experience right right so i mean the things that the things that I, so this is an easy one for me because I say it to my son. So I could just, it's kind of like, I wish, you know, um, he would listen. And I wish when I was 13, somebody had said something like this to me and that I had listened. Uh, and maybe they did. And I just don't remember. But the, the two things I would say that whatever you're going to do, you apply yourself. Like if you're in class, just pay attention to the class. And you don't have to actually take notes or study. You're fine. As long as you pay attention in class, you'll do great. Whatever you're going to do, focus on that thing. Don't be distracted doing other things. 13-year-old kids are notorious for just being completely distracted. And the second thing is discriminate. Learn discrimination. <laughs> discriminate. It's just a funny way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> I Learn want you to judge and profile. <laughs> huh? No, I just... No one says it like that just to discriminate because, you know, the PC movement of the 90s made that a bad word. Yeah. But I, I know you're coming at it from more of probably an engineering kind of thought process. I, I'm talking about friends. I'm talking yeah. about the people you choose to hang out with. I'm Filter. talking about being careful about who you decide to spend your time with and give your time to and the things that you decide to do. Think about it in the terms of, Am I getting dumber by doing this or am I getting smarter by doing this? <laughs> if the answer is I'm getting dumber, you know, don't do it anymore. I, or, kind of, uh, I, I think about that kind of constantly. I'm 39 right now. And I'm kind of in that zone. I'm like, does this benefit me or my kids? Right. Like it's basically what it comes down to. Time is a commodity when you get older. I mean, it is as you're 13 or younger, you know, but the more I thought about it as a unit of measurement, and you, it's finite and you don't know how finite it is right you don't know what that in that in number is oh you do know you well, know that it's going to be about 82 years at best yeah but i mean i could get of like much tomorrow meaning for living. after that it's going to be kind of like you're on borrowed time up to 80 82 you're good if you make it that far so it's not it's not going to be 500 years I'm really well. I'm really banking on my consciousness getting uploaded to some kind of robot or something. Yeah, Neuralink maybe at eighty two. Right. Get in there. Right. That would be. And cool. I won't know if I'm real or not. Um, it'll be wow. matrixish. Uh, yeah. So, so we we like to ask that question because uh, we kind of stumbled backwards into kind of a Rorschach test of sorts with that question, and so it'll it kind of tells us where you currently are, what you currently think about in the future a little bit, but uh, it really gives us a peek into the, your background as, as a kid. Whereas, so you're a successful serial entrepreneur now. 
but you know, that's never without any failure. Um, and it sounds like maybe you, uh, either, I don't, I couldn't tell if this, the answer, the number one part you had to your answer was because you didn't listen like AD, AD, ADHD style, or because you just kind of blew off any, anybody giving you advice. Well, the thing is when you're super young, you think, you know, everything. That's why I, I used to, when, when my, my daughter just went to school uh, as her first year of college, and I was telling her when she was 17, I'm like, they should lower their age requirements for becoming the president to 17, because you seem to know everything. That's a pretty good dad hate. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to have to borrow that one. You know, it's like, anyway, so you think you know everything. So that's 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 what's ironic about youth, you know, um, the the, but Anyway, the, the thing that all we can do is all I can do for my son, I mean, I'll just speak for myself, is just plant these seeds in their mind, right? You just keep planting seeds and then hopefully these seeds will germinate. And when he's like 20 years old and his friends are trying to talk him into a bad decision, he'll be like, ah, you know what? I think I'll pass on that one. Um, so more a moral compass, more or less. Yeah, kind of. If you can't just let him run wild, and not set the direction for them in some to some degree like yeah th there's a lot of that going on where people are just running wild and there's no direction from the parent there's no parenting um you know kids that they have no manners they blow off their parents and it's just like ugh, what do you guys you know I, I, fortunately for me i my kids are, so i'll give you a funny story so uh, my my ex-wife and I, we got divorced back in 2012. Congrats. And uh, part of the reason we went our separate ways was that we didn't agree on how to raise the kids. She wanted to spoil the hell out of the kids. And I didn't because I, I come from a background where there are military people on my dad's side of the family and my mom's side of the family. And it's just like you couldn't act like a spoiled kid as a, as a child. So we, was, we had to go our separate That wasn't way. even an option. <laughs> yeah. No. You, gotta earn, you gotta earn everything, which is yeah. I think the best thing you can learn as a kid to earn it. You know, you don't right. to, what's the value of free? It's zero, right? Right. So, Entitlement. Entitlements. We have a lot of entitled kids these days. Well, I'm uh, trying to I'm trying to get this in my six and seven year old now that I'm trying to incentivize them for everything they want, right? And figuring out like little things if they want something i'm not just going to buy it for them but right. uh, even if it's a thing of candy right like it's like okay son we got to play chess when we get home and i'll get you that candy you know something like that and also penalties incentives and penalties maybe i read too many freakonomics uh things but i kind of believe you know uh, not economist wise but i feel like the people who earned it People who are given stuff are kind of the worst people I know uh, because they've got, they don't really have any value. And then if they do try to get up to a high level, they get up there to think this is going to solve all their problems and they get there and that it's not, it's not fulfilling. Right. That's Sorry, exactly. I cut you off. So, um, no, I was just, I was just pointing out that, um, kids they they need direction and like one of the conversations i have with my son is like you know that feeling when you haven't done your homework or you haven't studied for a test and you go into school and you have your stomach is turning and you're like you don't feel good about it because you know you're gonna get you do poorly or or get busted i know you have that feeling because i'm not seeing you study right now Okay. And I had that feeling when I was your age and I don't want you to have it. And I don't want to just give you some guidelines that you're going to use for the next 20 years, even though you will, but just, just tonight, go do your study so that tomorrow you don't have that feeling. Just cover the one day's worth, you know, so to speak. I, I'm guessing you're a pretty bright guy. Your kids are probably pretty bright. Maybe they're the kids that don't have to study, which is also a kind of a Trojan horse later in life. Because eventually you have to learn how to study way too late. Yeah. So my smartest friends had to go, oh, I was 24. I was in law school and I didn't know how to study. Right. 
Yeah. Right. I, I personally didn't learn how to think till I was about 22, just because I took like a philosophy class in, in university. Because, you know, I had an engineering back, uh, I had an engineering major, so philosophy wasn't part of the requirements. But I was like, ah, my my dad guys, they all studied philosophy. Let me Let me take a philosophy course. So I took a philosophy course and then you would read stuff like, God is that which is in itself and does not exist outside of itself. And you're like, what? I know what all those words mean, but I don't know what that sentence means. So it started like squeezing your brain to learn how to think. And I think a lot of people actually don't know how to think because they don't want to squeeze their brain really that hard. So learning how to think and critical thinking and getting that inertia and momentum going on being able to think critically, it takes effort. And you have to put that effort in early. And as a child, as a kid, you know, raising kids, exposure to those kinds of problems early on and knowing that, hey, this, these are some of the things in life that are going to be important later is guidance, you know, that we can give them as parents. So why not? Why not? Yeah, it? It was, was there anything? In, so... In my experience, the best engineers are the ones that do take an outside kind of what would be called atypical for an engineer, like a philosophy class like that. Because the problem with, uh, I mean, there's a lot of engineer jokes out there, um, okay. as you probably know, but it's one of those things where they, they, my understanding is they will live in the constraints of what they have as resources instead of thinking of the, the boundless other possibilities out there is that fair to say the philosophy yeah. open you up to that yeah totally so the funny thing is I, I i continued my education by going after a master's in business so i didn't keep going down the engineering path but a lot of people they go like they'll get their bachelor's and their master's and their phd all in the same kind of fields types of fields and it's like you know more and more and more about less and less and less right and and as my friend Gene Rogroden used to say, by the time you get a PhD, you know everything about nothing. So yeah. it's, like, <laughs> it's like, you know, you, 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 don't, you don't have the common sense. You're not developing this wide view of reality and the world and everything around you. You're not, uh, you know, there, there's those kinds of limitations that having excessively, they'll go down the same path instead of going down a diverse path. It does right. have those setbacks. Yeah, like that's, I just... that's why I love doing stand-up comedy because it, I've got to get into a perspective of not within a bit, other people that are in the bit, their perspective is one way to kind of write jokes. But I also love just improvising on stage and riffing with, and doing crowd work and talking to the crowd. And getting that perspective is really interesting. How many people, you know, in this certain area hate biden <laughs> and how many people hate trump at this little town and like you're like oh okay this exists but it, in reality it was like most people live in the gray if i had to give it kind of a summary mm. so it's like yeah you can focus in one area you can be the you can be the pond that's very deep in one area right i've always thought it was a bad thing because people would say i'm a i'm a wide pond that's two feet deep and I was like, well, that's kind of a passive aggressive way to say, it. I know, I know a little bit about a lot of things, yeah. but uh, nothing about anything deeper than that. But I always, I always like to counter that with, I'd say I'm a, two feet deep with some holes, some really deep holes in there just to right. feel, don't feel better. But your engineering mind doesn't leave you because I'm looking behind you. If anybody's watching this video of this episode, I mean, it literally looks like uh there's you got three uh big i'm guessing this is kind of your mantra for where for sales x but you have complete conversion and life cycle and three different i'm guessing glass poster boards behind you yeah they're they're just it's kind of like we used to have um we, we used to service these clients that were all part of a franchise and they were doing caregiving and they couldn't understand anything about digital advertising if their lives depended on it. It was kind of like you talking in circles with them. So I put together this graphic and I said, look, here's the traffic from the internet. Here's the funnels that we capture it. 
we cycle it through. Some of them are going to go through right away, these ones. Some of them, they need more work. Which looks like plumbing. Right. So these ones, they, they're ready to buy, and these ones, they're not ready. And if they're not ready, you know, these are the six different categories that are not ready. So you got to, you know, for the, each different category, you have to have a of process for each one. That would one be your stages of qualification, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then and then just goes on and on, different channels, how it's structured, and blah, blah, blah. But basically, it uh, helped them visualize the entire process from beginning to end. And that's what kind of... That was the engineering side of, um, I, know, I studied industrial engineering, which is creating efficiencies in the manufacturing environment. And it's kind of like creating efficiencies in the learning for people that are older and they don't know anything about internet advertising. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, brother, this is very, uh, this, this, is, this makes me feel better because I used to, in my old office, I had a huge whiteboard. And I would have draw people would say, I'm like John Gruden drawing up plays and it looks like what's behind you. Mm. And I had to figure out a, a method to explain like what you have behind you. And everybody thinks you're crazy when you, when you're doing this, they think you're just doodling on the wall or just messing around. It's like, no, I have to, I have to be able to communicate this to anybody. I have to make it simple and detailed at the same time. Yeah. Um, I need to make it simple. And like, if you could put a layer over it, and just keeping it, making it more advanced until they got that sort of section, right? Like teaching anything, anything that's the, that can be a starting point of simple, but can end up being very complex, right? And so mine, mine is a, a totem pole model, which behind you in the conversion side, I see you have the bottom funnel too, which a lot of people miss. A lot of bad agencies don't put there. Yeah, which I find I find uh, also very uh, gratifying for me. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I mean, I, I have clients that, you know, we have a chat and they're like, Hey, can you send me a picture of those three things? I want to, I want to look at them in detail. Like, yeah, sure. But yeah. So do you have um, that published anywhere? Huh? Anybody, do you have that published publicly? Uh, I don't think it's published. I think it's, it's in, um, it's in some brochures that we, we printed, you know, so it's in one of those platforms where you can print on demand. But it's not published. Maybe we can, maybe we'll publish it. It's I mean that's not a big deal. I put down uh, a, a big goal of uh I was really uh edible high one night and I was like, I want to get this totem pole model to be in one of those Harvard business review models they show. You know, yeah. get with the five forces, those guys. <laughs> right. Um, so I have a theory on and you said you're in the Bay Area, correct? Yeah. So I've got a bit of a theory uh, on it, it. It's more the Bay Area kind of people that get successful. I find they all, all, and we're seeing this with the billionaires. You see Jeff Bezos is yoked now. Right. You got Musk and uh, uh, Zuckerberg that are doing jujitsu. Warren right. Buffett still eating McDonald's every day. He's chilling, but. Uh, I don't know if he's eating it every day. You might say that. <laughs> Well, I doesn't he eat he eats like the same McDonald's breakfast every day or something like that? If you eat McDonald's every day, you're not gonna make it as long as the Warren Buffett's been alive. Well, his his partner just passed <laughs> away that, that was, was uh, had an incredible story I read the other day. But uh I have a theory that you get so successful that eventually you have to get into martial arts and or get yoked. Is that do you see your colleagues, your other serial entrepreneur, CEO, founders, any of those guys? In that in that realm, there are a lot of kind of nerdy, skinny nerdy pencil neck types that are really successful at work. Uh, engineers, entrepreneurs that do jujitsu because it's humbling. While jujitsu, the what I've done a lot of martial arts. I, I got my black belt in Shotokan back in '99. I did Kyokushin, the the full contact karate. I got like a brown belt in that. I started doing jujitsu because it's still full contact, but you don't, there's no striking. Right. Right. So it's kind of like, it's like submission grappling. It's almost like wrestling, but if your back hits the mat, you don't lose. You can just keep going. You can start just laying on your back if you wanted to. It's not a big deal. Not a lot of striking. There's no striking. 
Right. There's zero striking. Well, I'm yeah. saying if you're playing, if you're working with amateurs, you might get some of those. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. That was, I mean, <laughs> so there, there's actually a really funny meme. It, it shows two dogs at the bottom. There's like a, there's a pit bull that's just like, you know, frothing at the mouth. And, and I know pit bulls, they don't, they're not people unfriendly. So um, that's just, I'm just describing the thing. You don't have to, um, don't worry about it. I've said yeah. horrible stuff on this show. <laughs> you're, no, you're... So uh, the, the pit bull is like frothing at the mouth and it's like in full attack mode. And then below it, it says jujitsu white belt. And then on the top, there's this lab that's just sitting super chill, you know, yeah. <laughs> looking super cute. And it says jujitsu black belt. And so that's, you kind of learn as you learn, as you learn, you learn to pace yourself. You learn to not overexert yourself. Don't gas out. Don't ex excessively use your energy. Kind of uh, establish grips before you start putting pressure. You know, some of the things that I, I work with white belts that, or they're at our academy they're so tense and i'm just i'm just literally sitting there you know I'm, i haven't even right. done anything at all and they're like ultra tense and then they gas out and i'm like what are you doing man I'm just, I have, i've done literally nothing and you already use like tons there, of energy just sitting here it's the fight or flight kind of pressure they're putting on themselves yeah. right it's self-preservation in a weird way so yeah, yeah so jujitsu teaches you to just you know uh preserve under pressure as the as the as the tagline for Kyotera Academy is it's a preserve under under pressure. So um you could be in a really bad situation, but as long as you keep your composure, you'll probably be okay. Well, I want to I want to make sure we dovetail into I'm guessing what your passion project is now, which is the CBD side. Yeah, I think it comes from maybe some inflammation, some recovery from some of this. Yeah, so this stuff here. So what happens is if you look, so I started using, you know, from back in the day when I was doing Thai boxing and shin kicks and all that stuff, you use like um, Tiger Balm, you use like Tiger Liniment, China Gel, you know, all this different stuff. I'm going to just say, yeah, I'm going to agree. I don't know what any of those are, but they sound amazing. Yeah. And, 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 and. It's not like gas station pills. No, no, it's just like, because you get these like bruises on your shins from shin kicking hard sandbags. Right. And then you roll them out with like a, you know, and then you rub this stuff on it to, anyway. Bottom line is that I've been using a lot of this stuff. And then when CBD started coming in the market, I started buying the different CBD things. I bought like 10, 15 different ones over time. I had that just like sit on the counter. I had every kind that you could imagine. And, uh, you know, it was hit and miss if they worked. So what I did is I started looking into the, the clinical, this is the engineering side, the clinical trials data. I'm like, let's look and see what the clinical trials data shows on the cbd and there is actually a document out there that is um a summary of all that because there aren't that many there's like 15 20 of them and there's a summary of all of those in one document and there's a table of the dosages and i saw the dosages and the dosages for each single dosage was over 100 milligram like 100 milligram for a single dose was like the minimum it was like 100, 200, 300 milligram single doses for CBD. When you look at these commercial stuff that you buy, it might have 500 milligram in like a big tub of it, you know? And 500 milligram in a big tub is nothing. It's literally nothing. So, so the CBD part of the CBD creams and potions and this and that and the other is mainly like a placebo effect that people yeah. are getting you know it's all these other ingredients they're not getting the cbd benefit itself so i i'm like you know what i gotta change i want to change that for myself so i started doing uh this product where in a half a ml single dose is 100 milligrams of cbd and this way you don't have to actually think about how much am i going to use is it too much is it too little you just take the one packet and you fold it in half, you squeeze the oil out into your palm, 
and then you just use that. You can use it on your shoulder, on your elbow, any of your joints, any of your kind of knees, uh, back, neck, anywhere that's hurting. You just rub that in. And the funny thing is that when you look at the reviews and when people, you know, give me feedback and stuff, they have this big surprise in their face and they're like, it works. That's like the biggest compliment. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It yeah, works. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really works. It's like, yeah. Because it's got like an entire tub's worth of CBD in one dose. So you're because basically for whatever you're... reason people are selling this stuff out there, they're not putting the right, you know, anything significantly valuable in there. So so what when you when did you come into this market, start looking at it? I mean, I started so there was there, was, there were about a year and a half ago. Two years ago. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know. Okay. So and a couple so of years it, ago, I started, and then it took a year to come up with the product. The first batch they, that we manufactured, they leaked and leached and stuff. And I had to send like an right. entire pallet's worth back. It took another six, seven months to get a second batch. Sweet. Get it fixed. Yeah. I mean, there's barriers to entry for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying more, more or less the advantages, you know, I was just talking to someone. I was just on a, what was I doing? I was, oh, I was writing something for my website, um, for my company's website. And uh, and it was about kind of planning for 2024 because I'm in the same, I came up through uh, digital advertising and then learned every other aspect of, of digital or marketing in general, I should say. Okay. Um, and so, and I think I have a puzzle brain like you do. Um, and so, but I was saying, AI is the most overused. It's going to be the mo it's the most overused 2023 20, marketing word, like maybe keto, because uh, anything could be keto because there's no qualification. And then what you're saying is you saw the opportunity of like there's aggressive expansion of that market, right? The CBD market the last 10 years, but right. no one's really doing the quality control. And no one's really doing it correctly. Uh, and you're saying, you know, they're barely putting enough in there for unless you're like one of those very sensitive people, like I can't have a coffee after two o'clock or I'm I'm up all night. You know, that's fine for them, maybe. But right. it never worked on me. And that's why I want to go on xcbd.com and try it out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's the, so if you if you look into if you read about the placebo effect, you'll find that just like everything else, there's a bell shaped curve. Most people, placebo works for them to some degree. Some people it really works for them, and some people it doesn't work for them at all. Yeah. Right. So if you're part of the people where placebo really works for you consider yourself lucky. <laughs> Amen. You know, you don't you don't I need to. I don't know. Right, regular sugar pill, and you know it'll work like Tylenol. You're good. Yeah, but you can't know. You can't yeah. know. <laughs> but, yeah, but but if you're you know if you're in the middle there where sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, or on the on the far edge where placebo is not going to get you there, then you're wasting your money on these other CBD products. But that's not to say that there's nobody selling the high dose stuff. There are people. No, no, no. But I'm saying there, yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah. Kind of, there's a you know with anything CBD or THC or, you know, shrooms coming down the line, maybe like right. they're, they're markets that are aggressively expanding too much at, at too high of a rate and quality control is always going to be lacking, you know, and then right. you're going to have people that come in just to get in the market and don't, don't care. They're just going to make sales and churn it out and get out of there. So I find that interesting that the CBD market kind of probably was mature enough you know, a year and a half ago, by the time you started looking at it and you didn't give up on going, well, it's pretty big. I think what my, what I'm trying to say is people listening, you know, don't let do the research first before you become defeatist. I feel like a lot of people go, well, I'm a little long in the tooth now. I don't know if that's even worth looking into to try this new thing, right. like, even if it's martial arts or Hey, let me go look at these CBD studies. I know how to read them. Um, and my my hunch, and you do the scientific method, my my hunch is they're not doing it correctly in a lot of these. 
And uh, I find that very interesting because I'm guessing you don't need to do this CBD company. No, and that's that's the key. So the, the thing about the, the CBD was that I see the need. There are a lot of people doing like martial arts, like jujitsu, and they're not doing yoga every day. Which means that you get stiff, you know, your your muscles are all tight. So you're only going two, three days a week. And, and so you need the CBD. You need something. So I was one of those people. I, again, I started like heavy duty doing yoga. And this, this program I just came back from was like yoga teachers training. Whoa. Uh, I see the gold seal on that certification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, uh, for Ghosh Yoga, which is Ghosh was the teacher of Bikram. Vishnu Charan Ghosh was teacher of Bikram, the younger brother of Yogananda, the author of Autobiography of a Yogi. So big fan of all of those uh, kind of Indian yogis. Uh, so I don't really need it as much now, but I run into people just just my last order. She sent she, she left a review and she's like, yeah, my mom uh, has a torn ligament in her shoulder. She's waiting to do surgery. And my dad has arthritis in his fingers and they're both using it and they love it, you know, and, and you're bettering their, their life. It's like, great. Wonderful. I that, mean, my know. hope, my hope is you can take out a, just a chunk of the painkiller market with this a little bit, you know? Uh, but that's a, that's a whole other, uh, that's a whole other topic. I'll, I'll maybe save for when we can get you back on, but uh, cause that's a very depressing topic as well. Um, anything else before we get out of here? I want to keep you on time. I want to make sure. Yeah, we're... no, I mean, I, I really appreciate, uh, the opportunity to have a chat law and I, I did check out your website, uh, briefly. I like your style, uh, okay, makes sure. a lot more sense now. I wish I had, uh, you know, um, done a better job for you, but, uh, what are you talking I, I got about? my points across. You are, you are a martial arts guy. Yeah. <laughs> Because all the martial arts guys I know were like, they're like, man, I, you know, I could have done better at whatever we're doing. And I'm like, you're fine. You're doing fine. You were great. Yeah. Look, I told you, if you were boring, I just, I would dominate this, this whole thing. So, um, so uh, but I think we get to some bullet points I had for you. We'll have to get you on again at some point. And um, we're going to get some product because we like, uh, we like testing out any of our guest stuff. Yeah, so, I appreciate you. I will send you some. I'll put some in the mail for you. All right. Sounds good, partner. Well, thanks for coming on. And uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll have to have you back on when uh, Eric, my co-host, is not on hiatus right now. So, I got you. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.